James and Jamie, welcome to the podcast. It's really good to uh, to see you again. It's been a while for both of you. Thank you very much for having us. Really excited to be here. Yeah, yeah so, absolutely buzzing. So today's topic obviously is going to be around sort of breath work. Um, and there's, I guess, all sorts of different ways that we can take this. And we've just spent 12 minutes talking about all sorts of cool stuff that we should really bring into this episode as well, I think. But before we do so, um, maybe some introductions would be helpful. So, Jamie, would you like to start with just a little intro into who you are, what you do, what got you into breathwork um, and anything else that you think is helpful? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Jamie Clements. I am uh, first and foremost a breathwork practitioner and facilitator and founder of a business called The Breath Space uh, and co-founder of Breathwork Mastery, which I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about as we go through. Um, my journey into breathwork came out of my own struggles and challenges with my mental health. So I spent a lot of my late teens and early 20s having um, a variety of challenges around depression, um, but primarily anxiety and, and panic attacks in my early 20s. And um, breathwork was a piece of a puzzle that ultimately led me kind of a piece of a holistic puzzle um, that led me out of, of that period of my life that was very, very challenging. Um, and breathwork was the most impactful and important part of that, that puzzle. Um, and I launched the breath space now uh, four and a half years ago, um, really inspired to share, you know, what I'd experienced firsthand. And I love that, that you kind of touched upon the fact that we can take this in many different directions because that's very much the the lens through which I try and um approach my work with the breath space and, and with breathwork mastery as well is to go you know breath work can be used in so many different ways can mean so many different things to different people um for different times different benefits different use cases um and yeah that's my kind of I suppose mission is to to be able to share that with other people empower them to um take back that that level of autonomy over their their nervous systems their minds their bodies their sort of wider experience of life so yeah it's a bit about me beautiful james i don't know if i'm gonna be able to do it in quite such a concise and eloquent way as jamie when people ask <laughs> my, uh, how i got into prep i guess i'll end up going on from this huge long life spiel which i'll try and not do now <laughs> um so i guess my journey into breath work started probably around just over 10 years ago now where um, I got glandular fever, which um, evolved into chronic fatigue and chronic pain. And that sort of started um, quite a few years of struggling with um, chronic illness, most acutely in my early twenties. Um, and I had chronic pain in my, I had chronic pain in every area of my body apart from my head. Um, and in my early twenties, when I was particularly suffering from chronic pain, I went to go and see a a specialist pain physio um, who encouraged me to start meditating and was basically the first person who educated me about the relationship between the mind and the body. And um, a few months after beginning a meditation practice and reading a few books about um, mind-body disorders and the relationship between the mind and the body, um, all of the pain dissipated and went. And that sort of began a journey into exploring meditation became particularly interested in Buddhism and then stumbled into um, a breathwork workshop, which blew my mind. And I couldn't believe something as simple as and powerful as the breath could have such a transformative effect upon the state of my mind and body, um, which began further explorations into breathwork, um, which culminated to me um, training to become a breathwork practitioner, which must have been five, six years ago now. Um, and yeah, I now run something called Breathe with James, um, which is at the moment predominantly oriented around um, a breathwork app. Um, and that breathwork app is oriented around using the breath to um, predominantly downregulate one's nervous system and move into a more relaxed and settled place. Um, and as Jamie's spoken to, co-founder of um, Breathwork Mastery, this um, online course we've actually just launched today. Um, and I'm sure we'll speak more to this, but my sort of journey as a breathwork practitioner has been one of moving from, um, I guess, the more sort of like transformational, um, altered states of consciousness styles of breathwork actually into more of um, a gentle approach, which is oriented around how to use the breath to move into a more uh, organized nervous system state. Um, predominantly because that's because what I've come to understand is what I need. Um, and as such, my interest has sort of followed that in my teaching too. 
that's really interesting I like that because I think a lot of us that's how we get to where we get to it's something that we needed um and then we become a little bit of an expert in it and it becomes our thing ultimately um I'm in I'm curious you know how many people could say that they stumbled into a breathwork session <laughs> had a profound experience um and then became a breathwork facilitator or it became a key part of their self-care routine um I think it's testament to how powerful breathwork is when it comes to a lot of this type of stuff um Guys, how would you approach introducing breathwork? Because we've already mentioned there are different styles, there are different ways that we can incorporate breathwork into a, a practice. So if we start maybe with just sort of a an intro into this to help everyone understand it. For sure. I, I think I'd love to throw a question back, not as a not as a curveball, a question back to both of you, which is what from your personal and also professional experience what do you think the majority of people hear and in, understand when they hear the word breathwork what do, what do you think people think we mean out on the street have you heard of breathwork somebody goes yes and you go what is it what what do you think they would say if that's um a fair question yeah James. I, think the, I, think the, I think the average person on the street would say what the hell is breathwork <laughs> Only because that's still the response I get quite a lot of time. <laughs> I, say, um, I sort of have that almost when someone asks me what I do, I can tell pretty quickly whether they're going to know what breath work is. And a lot of the time I think, oh, here we go. I'm a breath worker or I'm a breath work practitioner. They just get this very quizzical and um, strange look back. Um, but I guess maybe more within, I guess, that sort of like, um, people who are at least relatively aware of sort of like health and wellness. So maybe if one was to walk into um, a yoga studio or a gym, um, I think most people um, in that space, if you were to ask them, what is breath work? Um, I think there's definitely an increasing amount of people who would associate it with the more sort of like transformational styles of breath work. So whether that's... Um, using the breath, um, I guess to clarify transformational being sort of it, using the breath to um, bring up processing clear what might be referred to as emotional charge or trauma from the body, um, but also the sort of like more intense visceral styles of breath work within um, that field, such as your sort of like Wim Hof breathing. Um, so effectively things that are quite um, the sort of more tangible, intense visceral styles of breath work is what I would think most people would associate it with rather than sort of functional breathing um, or specifically how's, how to use the breath to regulate one's nervous system and move into a more um, organized nervous system state. I think within that sort of thinking out loud, that's, that's probably going to vary depending upon like um, specific demographics within society. So I guess maybe if one were to walk into a yoga class, people might associate breath work more with pranayama um, and yogic styles of breath work. If someone was to walk into a gym, maybe it would be more, more Wim Hof style. If someone were to walk into a therapeutic space, maybe it would be the more transformational styles of breath work. Mm. Uh, yeah. What do you think, Alex? I think what James said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, that, I think that was a good answer. Um, I do think I would say, you know, Wim Hof obviously is one of the more well-known. He's been on TV now and all that kind of thing. Um, and then I guess from my perspective, just I do think that sort of conscious connected breathing is becoming more well-known, especially if people are on social media within the health space. Yeah. That just seems to come up a lot um, for whatever reason. Um, so I think those two are what I think most people have had the most exposure to. Mm. If we take out, you know, the yogis, for example, um, then that would be my kind of gut feeling, as well as what James said at the beginning, which is what the hell's breath work? Yeah, yeah uh, I think that's the most frequent answer for sure. <laughs> it's interesting because I think for me, I typically, or where my brain goes with it is actually that most people if average person that, that does know what breath work is i think i would more often than not hear back something like box breathing something like extended exhale breathing more breathing exercises than breath work as we know it in that more experiential piece and i think maybe that's why 
to come back to your original question, Alex, like why the question of what breathwork is and the understanding of it and the education around it, the demystification of it is really important because I always say, you know, I wouldn't want someone coming to a conscious connected breathwork session expecting down regulation. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, that to me would mean that I, in, in some, at some point in that journey, I'd done my job not very well in helping people to understand what they're getting themselves into. Mm -hmm. And I do think with maybe the mainstreaming of breathwork as a whole, that has the capacity to happen more often. I think within the breathwork world or the health world, as you guys have spoken to as well, um, we probably do think of it more breathwork is transformational styles of breathwork. Um, but I think for sort of general population, maybe there's a bit more of a breadth of understanding and misunderstanding as to what it is. You know, am I doing a breathing exercise for five minutes or am I crying um, for 90 minutes? You know, where's the, where's the difference within that? Um, I've always really spoken to breathwork as sort of an umbrella term. Um, that touches all of the things that, that both of you have spoken to there of sort of functional breathing, nervous system regulation and therapeutic kind of altered states of consciousness end of the breathwork spectrum. Um, and that I think allows us to really tailor, you know, tailor what is possible with the breath to the individual. If we're talking a one-to-one -one kind of setting and capacity, are we looking at breathing dysfunction? Are we looking at nervous system or symptoms of nervous system dysregulation um or are we looking at that deeper end of the spectrum and the answer i'd say for the majority of people i speak to is probably there is a space and capacity for all three of those to have some kind of role at the right time in the right way in the right order as well i think that's to me the beauty of breathwork as well is that it actually enables us to take that you know multi almost a holistic lens within the breathwork conversation and not just go Wim Hof breathing or holotropic breathing or, you know, functional mm -hmm. breathing. I think a, a little bit more of a tailored sort of bespoke um, individualized approach is, is the most powerful route that I've certainly found. And, and that's also how I came to breathwork as well was through that sort of multi factor lens, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's a really nice way to think about it, I think. And you mentioned kind of order there being potentially important. Um, can you just expand on what you mean by that? Yeah, it's a good question. Can I expand on that? Um, I think if I think about, you know, sort of more private practice clinic work that I do one to one, um, the majority of people who are walking through that door, generalization, but majority of people I work with are struggling with stress, with anxiety, with insomnia, with burnout. And those to me are, you know, pick a list of the four most frequent symptoms of nervous system dy dysregulation in modern times. And those are probably your, your kind of your best answers. And so I would typically from an order perspective, initially always turn to points one and two of functional breathing and nervous system regulation as an initial route in to go, okay, let's start at the bottom rung of the pyramid. Let's start with the fundamentals, get that, get the house in order. And then if we feel comfortable doing that and feeling like actually there might be something to be gained from going deeper, working with the subconscious, working with altered states, working with emotional charge, emotional debt, um, working with trauma, then we can introduce that a little bit later down the line. I think that's typically how how I would approach things um, really to build, I suppose, a base of and a foundation of safety and organization, which is, I know, something that James speaks amazingly to kind of this organization within the nervous system so that you can then go exploring at a deeper level um, with that base of safety first, because I think the majority of people who are suffering with that dysregulation, disorganization are um, perhaps not well equipped to dive deep into that stuff that can be quite um unsettling at times yeah and destabilizing exactly yeah no it's a really good point james do you have anything you'd like to sort of add to any of that yeah well i think it was i mean sort of the i think my sort of journey with, with breath work personally was definitely the other the other way around um and probably not massively helpfully and i i wonder um, I, I do think that's probably the 
may be the case for the majority of people in terms of at least being attracted towards these more sort of like transformational, powerful, trauma releasing styles of breath work. Um, slightly on the premise, at least for me anyway, that I can sort of like bring up and clear and process all of my stuff in one week, over one weekend or a couple of weekends, and then just get on with my life in a sort of much better, happier, coherent and balanced state um, without actually having the sort of foundational understanding as Jamie's just spoken to it firstly of sort of functional breathing, the importance of that, but also establishing the sort of like baseline level of safety and organization back into one system. Um, so that one actually just feels slightly more settled and relaxed as they move through their every day um, before then going in and potentially exploring um, the deeper realms, um, as Jamie's spoken to. Um, I know from my experience personally that it probably would have been more helpful to almost build that sort of like safe container first, or at least have an understanding of um, what that might require to build that safe container um and then explore the deeper work rather than the other way around and i think that's sort of a little bit of my message at the moment is i think especially with social media and um i love the phrase i've had jamie use it so i'm gonna steal off him sort of catharsis porn um where there are these accounts which is it's sort of you know it's, it's release 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 cry 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 um which can be quite attractive to someone who is experiencing a lot of emotional discomfort, um, rather than, I guess, the more like subtle, nuanced, delicate approach of actually, this is going to take a little bit of time. You're going to need to slow down in your life. You're going to need to bring more organization into your system by creating conditions in your life that support that and engaging in things like a slow conscious breathing practice. And this might take six months or a year or even longer to slowly reorganize your system and rewire your neurobiology. Um, and then from that place, we'll move into the deeper stuff, um, rather than the other way around. It's really, I think as well, symptomatic of, uh, sort of, I guess, spiritual capitalism, wellness capitalism in terms of the like magic bullet, you know, one, one thing fixes all, um, culture that we find ourselves in. People want to hear that, you know, a disorganized nervous system, a traumatized, um, individual wants to hear that that thing is going to cure all of their problems and so from a sort of marketing perspective i can absolutely see why it happens that way around and also i suppose to try and i guess bring a little bit of balance to my views on this as well i have worked with a few individuals not not loads but a, a few there's one in particular who came on one of my retreats a few years ago and he had interestingly on his application form or his pre-retreat form um i said you know what are you hoping to get from this retreat and it was you know tools to manage stress and support my nervous system and i was like okay he, i don't think he's fully grasped what we're going to be doing because there's a lot of that deeper diving and he had a really in, intense profound difficult challenging experience quite dark at times um a lot of emotion coming up and i saw him about six months later and he had lost about 20 kilos he was quite overweight before his hrv had doubled his um resting heart rate had dropped by seven and um, there was all of this physiological um change and mental and emotional change from those singular kind of experiences and so i think there's a little bit of chicken and egg sort of cyclical piece here of going someone who's got a you know, a dysfunctional breathing pattern that could be there because of past trauma and emotional charge that they're holding in the body that is then perpetuating dysfunctional breathing, nervous system dysregulation. So I do think there is probably a case to enter from either side. And maybe we're talking about um, a sort of two pronged approach to really we're going, okay, functional breathing and nervous system regulation might feel a little bit more like symptom management. And then the deeper work could actually be addressing root cause, not in every case, but certainly I think in some cases. Um, but I do think from, I think I speak partly for James here as well. Um, and for myself, I think where my view sits on this at the moment is that those deeper modalities absolutely have a place so long as they are coupled and partnered with a toolkit of grounding, regulation, organization for the nervous system. Uh, and I think that's maybe 
part of the missing link in the broader sort of breathwork conversation and breathwork well sort of the world of breathwork business i think there's a, a little bit missing there that's really interesting and you know it res it feels so similar to conversations within sort of the psychedelic space you know and, and obviously there is such a strong overlap i think in regards to that transformational style conscious connected breath work those deep dives as you say and, and the experiences that you can have so as you say if you're if you're doing that kind of sandwiching it with some good preparation with some good integration with that toolkit that you just said jamie um i think is such an important part of it and mm. just to i think reiterate what you said around the magic pill because it's not i think it's not just the magic pill but it's people want to heal quickly as well um you know there is this kind of urgency around the healing process often and whether that's kind of psycho-emotional or physical with my sort of functional medicine hat on it's the exact same thing people thinking in a month or so they can be back to, to sort of where they were um and i think especially with these sorts of things there has to be that level of of patience of understanding of compassion and that's where maybe the, your course is going to be really great because that is the educational piece that is so important understanding okay why why have i been given these specific practices what are they doing in my body and how long may that take um so yeah that's really interesting context guys thank you anything that either of you just want to bolt on to the end of what's just been shared i think just to add a little something is um something which feels important to me and which we're doing with the course is, is having a little bit of a nervous system lens through which one um, has an understanding of breath work and also which technique might be most applicable to them, dependent upon their um, current physical and emotional and emotional state. Um, so to use an example of sort of, I guess, probably the most well known breath work practice in the world, Wim Hof breathing um, can be brilliant for some people um, in terms of eliciting this sort of acute and mild um, stress in the physiology and creating this hormetic response as a, as a result or, or increasing one's um, resilience to stress through, through hormesis is probably a better way of putting it. Um, can be brilliant for someone who has a relatively organized nervous system, has relative um, physical resilience, but for someone who might be experiencing a lot of stress and anxiety, who might be to use nervous system language in a state of underlying sympathetic arousal, engaging in a practice which consciously and purposefully elicits a stress response in the body isn't necessarily going to be ha most helpful for that individual um, in the current state that they are in. And that's when it can become helpful to firstly have an understanding of where one is um, or how one's nervous system is currently healthy or unhealthy, organized or disorganized, and in doing so, which technique might be um, most applicable to them. So in a state of sympathetic arousal, it'd be much more helpful to engage in a down-regulating breathwork technique that returns one nervous, one's nervous system into a place of ventral regulation. Um, whereas if one is in sort of the state of dorsal shutdown, actually bringing some energy back into the system by using a technique such as Wim Hof breathing might be a bit more applicable um yeah amazing so that's probably a nice cue to sort of start to introduce your course which i think you said sort of launches today um which is exciting so guys who wants to start just by sort of maybe introducing the course how was it how was it birthed <laughs> I think it was birth through Jamie sending me a WhatsApp message saying, I think we should maybe do something together. <laughs> I, I'd even zoom, I'd zoom further back and why I'm further back than that. James and I, uh, before James made the very wise decision to leave London, um, used to live very near to each other. And we'd probably once a month, once every couple of weeks when we were kind of consistent, would go for a walk along the river and talk about um, work and life and, and the state of um, kind of the breathwork world and and what we were seeing in it. And I'm not sure if I've ever said this directly to you, James. I've said this to lots of other people, especially recently talking about the course, but um, I've always massively appreciated our ability to operate in exactly the same space with zero sense of competition. 
I think we do a very, very naturally good job at knowing that we approach things in a similar way through a different lens. Um, and I think that's actually really allowed us to, to create something powerful um, and create something really that plays to both of our strengths um, and does people uh, a, you know, a service as a result. And I remember saying to James on one of those walks, probably because time flies probably over two years ago um you know it'd be good to do a course at some point you know maybe we do a training together because that's the you know the thing that everybody does right now is just launches their own training um and then i was sort of sat pre-christmas going i love work working with other people and that conversation just popped back into my head i've reached out to james and um yeah that was sort of the the beginning of things um and i think you know there's a, a bit on on the website that we created that i think's quite important to this conversation which is the bit around sort of why it's been created and I think we've spoken a little bit to it already in this conversation but I do think um the breathwork space the breathwork world for better and for worse has grown incredibly quickly and it has become a bit of a wild west to sort of put it gently and we really want this course to be um the most impactful and accurate and credible consumer breathwork course out there i think ultimately is is the goal um that is grounded in credibility in reality in kind of an honest and and realistic way that works against all of the stuff that we've talked about in terms of you know magic bullet promises and immediacy and urgency um so i think that's been really the the big driver of it um and for both of us, you know, the impact that that has is is really important um, and wanting to do that through the lens of everything the breath can offer. Um, I don't know if you had anything to kind of add on top of that, James. No, I think you put it really, really well. I think the only thing I would add is um, we both feel that there are a lot of people out there doing really brilliant things within the breath work space. So whether it's sort of like Patrick McKeown and functional breathing or the different schools of breath work that sit under the sort of more conscious connected breathing styles of breath work, but very few people who actually bring it together in one place and can speak to the nuances and complexities of different styles of breath work, why and when they might be more applicable to use dependent upon one's current nervous system state um, and how to also integrate breath work into one's daily life, um, dependent upon when and where they, they, they most need it. Um, so it's, it's really to provide a, um, a one-stop house, one-stop house, not the right phrase, but I guess a, a one place where all of those different styles of breath work come together and provide also a, a, both a theoretical deep dive into those different styles of breath work, as well as then bringing it to life through different practices and exercises too. Amazing. And you know, I think you're so right there. Like there's, there's lots of different schools out there, but they all do kind of one thing ultimately. Um, so it sounds really exciting to sort of integrate this all together. So with the course, guys, is it sort of, um, I guess, to get into the practicalities, is it sort of a, a self-paced thing that people do? Is it, how is it sort of structured? A little bit of both. Um, we have pre-recorded content each week, uh, which is effectively sort of like a theoretical deep dive into the relevant topic that week. So, um, for example, week two is functional breathing. So there'll be 30 to 45 minutes of uh, pre-recorded um, audio that we will record that is effectively a lesson um, on sort of like the biomechanics of breathing, the biochemistry of breathing, what a bolt score is, um, as well as then practices and exercises that one will be able to do um, to improve um, their day-to-day -day breathing pattern. And then there'll also be a live session with Jamie and I, where we'll effectively um, bring what they've learned or build on what they've learned that week. Um, and also give people the ability to ask questions. Um, and then we've also got some amazing guest teachers um, who are, I guess, specialists within their specific field of breath works, whether that's breath work performance. Um, we've got Richard Blake, who I think has been on this podcast. Oh, yeah. He's currently doing a PhD in transpersonal psychology and specializing in conscious connected breathing. Um, so he's actually doing sort of the biggest, I think I'm right in saying the biggest research project ever on conscious connected breathing. Um, it's something like that. He talks it up a lot and he speaks very well. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got him coming on and then, and then um, Connie Basalski, who's a 
uh, also amazing breathwork coach, but also training and somatic experiencing at the moment and sort of brings a very nice holistic lens. Um, so it's, it's a real fear, like we really want it to be um, for want of a better word, deep in terms of its, its theory, but also its um, the practices and exercises too. Um, yeah. Amazing. Jamie, anything to add? I don't think so. Not not a huge amount more. I think um, as James spoke to there, I, it's a desire, I suppose, to to really equip people with that deep knowledge and the practical application of that knowledge to then almost in the way that we were speaking to earlier, apply that same multi-factor lens to themselves and almost become their own breathwork practitioner at home and go, okay, um, through week one and this um, functional breathing, I've identified uh, this pattern with my natural breathing habit. And I now know that if I work on my tolerance to air hunger, for example, I could improve that. And so I'm going to do that. But also I've noticed that I've tend to you know fall into this sympathetic overdrive so i'm going to do 10 minutes of nsdr or extended exhale breathing daily so really empowering people to build their own practice that is going to be tailored and bespoke to them um perhaps without them having to go and work with a practitioner one-to-one -one. um so sort of a combination of that deep understanding and education with um how to apply that to yourself and your life amazing the only other thing I'm just going to quickly add is just because I do think it makes the course relatively unique, um, which I do feel really good about is most practitioners, whether it's in the breathwork space, yoga space, or whatever else it might be, tend to sort of like go off and do their own thing and create their own course. I do think this is relatively unique in terms of sort of like Jamie and I coming together and combining our two skill sets, which are similar, but also different. And I really hope that that will give the course sort of a a relatively unique feeling people being able to learn from both of us and us also sort of being able to apply our unique skill set within that thank you i was gonna i wanted to ask earlier around because jamie you mentioned on you've got different sort of strengths as a partnership so i'm curious what what are they <laughs> maybe we should speak to each other's strengths <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think that would be a, a nice way to do it. Um, yeah. I'm I'm happy to to kick off. So um, don't flirt too much. Yeah, get ready, <laughs> get ready. Um, the ego's going to be t ticking <laughs> around in the background. Um, <laughs> we make sure I'm really happy this podcast is recorded just for this specific bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was literally on a call before this, and I was I was talking to um, one of our what I view as kind of one of our natural differences, but one one thing that I really kind of admire in James, which is um, James seems to naturally gravitate towards deep work at a very kind of um, organized nervous system lens to his own work, and I think that speaks volumes to how he operates, but also the expertise that he can bring. So his um, focus in the, in the course will be around that nervous system piece and the functional breathing piece. Um, and I know that that's been where you have spent a lot of your time over the last couple of years, really doubling down in the bits that you feel passionately about. And I think um, that really is something that, yeah, I've always kind of admired is your, your, the depth to which you go and also the integrity through which you operate. I think it would be very easy to stay in the conscious connected breathwork world because you've trained in it, because it's, you know, it's catharsis porn because people want it, you know, all of this stuff would make it very easy to stay there and do that. But you've continued to, to follow what feels right to you and what has impact for you and for others through your work. Um, and I think that that to me is is the strength that I see coming most strongly into into this um, course is actually I've felt myself drawn into um, in a really positive way James's way of working in terms of the depth of knowledge the depth of um, commitment to it um, because it's not quite so naturally there for me and so I think people will really get the best of both worlds um, through that so I hope that made sense um but yeah sounds great to me <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so i guess the for me um well the, the slightly the um sort of rewind the clock is the first time i ever met jamie 
was actually in one of the first ever sort of live breathwork sessions that I ever taught um, oh. at sort of like 7.30 in the morning somewhere. It was, I think it was a corporate, it was, some, it was something either for a brand or some sort of corporate workshop. Anyways, Jamie and two other people in the class. Um, so it does feel like there is something, I don't know what the right phrase for it is, but having sort of started there, me teaching sort of my first session, quite nervous and Jamie being there to then sort of mm. must be six years on now, or five or six years on to us both running a course together. Um, so I really have seen Jamie's sort of like evolution from breathwork student to practitioner to, to being who he is today. Um, and I think for me, sort of, I guess most simply is I don't teach performance or um, conscious connected, performance related or conscious connected breathing anymore. And Jamie is someone who uh, <laughs> as my transition away from conscious connected breathing has sort of um, evolved is the person who I, I always recommend people to. Um, and the reason for that is his way of being able to understand it on um, a level like I don't know anyone, anyone else who can, um, but also to be able to convey that level of understanding in, in relatively layman's terms. Um, and what I mean by layman's terms is, is making it accessible, um, being able to reach um, many more people than others would be able to do so. Um, and in a way whereby it is enjoyable too. Um, so I guess my best sort of like depiction of that or how I see that is people almost like walking into a corporate setting um, or a corporate workshop thinking, what the hell is breath work? What is this? And then Jamie, this very good looking, strong, <laughs> open guy sort of like steps up at the front and half an hour later, everyone has sort of fallen in love with Jamie, but also the style of breath work that he's teaching too. Um, and I do think that is, a, that is sort of like, I say it relatively jokingly, but it is, it's a real gift in terms of being able to take a subject matter like breath work, but also specific styles of breath work, like conscious connected breathing, which are very complex, very difficult to teach, um, and also require being able to create this um, really safe container, which Jamie very naturally does, and I think comes to him very naturally, um, is, is really special and is very unique. Thanks, mate. And he also spends a lot of time in the gym and is a lot stronger than me, so just like really great on the performance stuff too. <laughs> It'd be much more appropriate on the performance week having him teach that rather, rather than me. <laughs> and then we've got then we've got body armor. <laughs> we've got Jack. We've got Jacko coming in with his eight pack to really just take it to the next level as well. So um, no, I really appreciate that, mate. And I think there's probably the the Venn diagram of of this course and us as individuals has a huge chunk in the middle and a huge chunk of overlap, which I think is a desire to again a commitment to accessibility a commitment to accuracy, a commitment to pragmatism as well, which is going, okay, I could tell you, you know, I always say in my talks, I would love to tell you that my first breathwork session changed my life, but it was the start of a two and a half year journey where I had to fully immerse myself in it to take myself to the place that I am now. And I think there's a level of um, realism that this work deserves. Um, and I think that's where we collide ultimately i think is in that desire to take what we know can be incredibly impactful and make sure it has that impact by not over promising and not making big bold claims that we can't live up to um you know and and sometimes i think in myself and again i don't want to speak for you james but i can probably verge on somewhat underselling it at times because of that um, almost erring on the side of caution. And then I have a reality check where I'll speak to a client or I'll speak to someone at a group session. I'm like, oh no, this still has the power to literally be life-changing. Um, and I think it's nice to have those two, those two framings for it to go, okay, let's be real here. Let's be grounded. Um, but let's not underestimate just how impactful this work has the, the capacity to be. Mm, absolutely. I mean, going to your your story of the the guy who over that six month period after that sort of whatever it was weekend or a few sessions had that sort of response it's it is powerful um i mean i know both of you a little bit you know we've spent some time on various zoom calls and i follow you both on social media and i think how you've both um talked about the other just it 
it deeply resonates and it feels a hundred percent true for me sort of from my window into your worlds and how you articulate yourselves and things like this um i think this course is going to be incredibly helpful for people i'm just even thinking of some of our health path customers and you know the bigger context of where this course fits into people's journeys because it's not just people with stress and burnout and dysregulated nervous systems if we think about the role of breathing and breath work within the majority of medical conditions i'm going to go that far and say when we think of ibs when we think of the role that breathing plays in the digestive system the lymphatic system etc cetera, etc cetera, like a lot of people could come and learn from you guys um, for lots of different reasons, which is just another way that it's just so impactful, I guess. hundred percent. Yeah. It, it's something that I've recently started speaking to, which is thinking of breath as really one of the missing pillars of health. I think it's so almost so simple on the face of it that it gets thrown out as, you know, how, how impactful could it be? Um, and then actually going, okay, well, we pay a lot of attention now to movement. We pay a lot of attention to nutrition. We pay a lot of attention to all of these kind of pillars, important pillars of health, the holistic picture, but breath to me, as, as you've sort of just alluded to there, Alex really is the, the pillar that combines the pillars in a way. It's sort of the, the one that is at the core of all of this. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's um I'm excited I'm excited to share to share it I'm excited to learn more about it um I, it's definitely something that feels like could be a very common sort of referral for lots of different types of health practitioners who might not be in the breath space but need something to for their clients um so I'm definitely excited to learn more about it um guys is there anything that you want to share um before we conclude anything you want to reiterate there's nothing there's nothing jumping out for me um where is there, anything, is there anything you want to share on your breath work stuff alex um I think you've covered it really well, guys, to be honest. Like, I just see, I see breath work. I do see it as the missing piece, I think. Um, you know, having had some, I love, I love conscious connected breath work as well. I love one-to-one -one rather than group, unless there are several other facilitators, obviously. Um, and I've just seen some clients whereby they've had such powerful experiences. Sometimes they've had powerful realizations around how they're showing up in the world and how that's impacting their health journey. Mm -hmm. Other times there's just been a big physical improvement for unknown reasons. Um, and I think sort of that's testing me to the kind of the power of this. It's working on the physical, the mental, emotional, and the spiritual. Um, and I would reiterate what you've both shared today around just being conservative maybe in regards to what's going to happen and being, mm -hmm being open to the fact that you might have some kind of intention, whether it's for completing your course, whether it's for a specific one-off breath session, um, but holding that lightly and sort of, you know, trying to enjoy and trust the process because it is going to be a process. Um, I think that's really important, but I'm just really thankful and grateful that I found it when I did um, mm. because it's, I think it complements it complements all the other pieces of the puzzle from a health perspective, um, which is why I think your course could be such a great thing for other practitioners to be aware of um, because they won't have the skill set, but it's, it's such a key tool in the toolkit for all of us. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Can I ask a question in relation to um, conscious connected breathing and psychedelics? Yeah. As a, as someone who has a train training in both and personal experience in both, what do you get from psychedelics that you don't get from conscious connected breathing or vice versa? And when would you recommend someone would to, when would you recommend someone 
would benefit more from conscious connected breathing or would actually benefit more from psychedelics? Hmm. Oh, James, those are big questions. Um, I would always recommend conscious connected breath work before entering the psychedelic space if you're new to it. Um, I see conscious connected breath work as an incredibly powerful preparation for a psychedelic experience, but I can also see how um, just working on using breath exercises and everything you've been talking about today is the anchor. You know, you're if you're having a turbulent time during a psychedelic experience, the breath is can be everything. Mm. Um, so I just think getting a strong relationship with the breath before you start developing a relationship with a plant medicine is, is just such, it's the best tip I could probably give someone ultimately. Um, yeah. and I think also as a, as a psychedelic guide, and this comes from people I've spoken to more than necessarily just me, it's if you're able to breed someone for a, a few sessions and understand how they show up in that sort of space it's really helpful for the guide because it gives you a little bit of preparation for that person's psychedelic journey as well. Um, yeah, I I totally agree. I think um, it's great grounding and prep for someone to understand in a slightly paired back way what an, what an altered state of consciousness consciousness experience can be like from the the physical sensations the the visuals the kind of the the way the body responds the way the mind responds i think in the same way we're talking about kind of functional breathing and nervous system regulation as the the foundation for ccb in the same way i think ccb can form a really solid foundation for work with psychedelics because um i always say you know the key difference is that with ccb you can get off the ride with mm. psychedelics you can't get off the ride once once you're on it so i think there's a level of of safety that comes with that and and comfort that comes with that um and then there'll be some people who've who are better attuned to jumping in at the deep end i think as well um yeah, yeah i think there's definitely they're very complementary and i think we're going to see more overlap and more kind of um connection between the two as we go both in kind of the theory and the, the practice yeah absolutely and i think you know doing the conscious connected breathing in a in a group session i do think is more powerful than doing it one-to-one -one. i just some of the experiences i've had in group whereby you're almost blending with someone next to me um in is the only way i can describe it um that sort of experience i think really then helps with some of the experiences that we might have in a psych sort of psychedelic ceremony where we're pretty much always going to be with others ultimately on the retreat site setting. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think the only thing I was going to say, Jamie, you've, you've said it already, which is you can't get off the ride and that's where breath work can be such a powerful um, stepping stone, I think for this ultimately. Um, and we obviously there's the, there's the legality side here as well, obviously as well, which is a, an obvious component to this. Um I thought, was there any other elements to your question, James? I think that was it. Uh, it's, in it's interesting. Um, no, I don't think so. Um, but I guess it's, it's just that both seem to be, I guess, surging in popularity um, and both seem to have a lot of similarities in relation to what people are looking for, but also both feel um, unique, at least in relation to the, I think, as you've spoken to in terms of being able to get off a ride or not. Um, yeah. And that's it. I think, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Jules Evans, who just does a great job of sharing the sides of the psychedelic space that not many people like to share, you know, the 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 bad trips and the the negatives that are happening in some of the studies that are being published that the authors aren't sharing in in their papers. So I think with this boom in the psychedelic sort of community and with psychedelic science we we are getting a very biased lens in regards to this and people therefore do have this oh it is the magic pill it literally is i can take i can do a psychedelic session and my depression will be cured and yes for some people it will be for others it won't be and they might be even more depressed afterwards for various reasons and for others it will come back 
Um, so I really like, I always call him out as someone who's doing an amazing job of bringing a much more balanced perspective to what is out there. Um, and obviously with breathwork, again, as a result of everything we've shared, it, it doesn't have that side to it. Um, so it is a really powerful way because it just doesn't have some of the risks that psychedelics do have. Um, so yeah, I could talk about but that. Every day it doesn't later. have that side to it in the same way, but I do think there's similarity specifically in relation to, for example, something like Wim Hof breathing, which if you were to search on Google, Instagram, yeah, you have so yeah, sure. many success stories. So many people have cured autoimmune diseases and it has been amazing for those people. And I don't want to take that away, but also I know when I've sort of done a, a post on Wim Hof breathing, sort of calling out the nuance of it in relation to it not being um, necessarily the most appropriate technique for some people, suddenly you sort of get all these people coming forward saying, oh, I actually didn't have a very good experience with it. Or like, oh, this makes so much sense. Why always used to feel so bad doing Wim Hof breathing is you don't tend to hear from the people who actually aren't having the best experience with it, but rather just sort of get the shiny sugar coating of, a big show on ITV and however many people yeah. have with their autoimmune issues or whatever else. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Thanks James. Awesome guys. Well, I'm super excited. Where can people go? Like we haven't, I'll put it at the beginning, I'll put it in the show notes and I'll mention it at the beginning, but what is the website? Uh, it's breathworkmastery.co. Someone's taken dot com dot co. <laughs> <laughs> I should have probably said this before, but if it's if it's allowed, we have actually set up a, a little discount code for um health path listeners, um oh, which we can, um ten percent off. So we can yeah, maybe put that in the show notes or something. Yeah, we'll put that in the show notes. I'll mention it in the intro as well. Guys, thank you so much. I think um we'll have to get you back on at some point later in the year and maybe do sort of an update with how the course is going and some testimonials or something, because I think there's so much more that can be talked about when we when we're on these topics um but thank you for your time uh, good luck with it i'm looking forward to following the journey um and i'm sure we'll speak soon